Hey guys, welcome back to Hawks Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, this is uh, Meatloaf 92. Um, 92 or 91, I don't remember now. <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever it says on the screen. <laughs> hey, uh, anyway, uh, we've got a couple of interesting things going on here. Um, got some viewer appreciation stuff to show you guys. Uh, some fellow YouTubers and uh, a uh, fellow tradesman up um, from Alaska. Uh, we'll take a look at that stuff. And uh, went to the flea market, uh, picked up a couple of interesting items. We'll take a look at those. Um, got some feedback on that weird hammer I showed uh, last week, so uh, we'll kind of follow up on that. And while we're on the subject of hammers, um, I got the handle for um, the uh, beryllium copper uh, liquid oxygen hammer that uh, uh, the viewer sent in. So uh, we're going to put a handle on that, and I'll show you guys how to put a put a handle on in a nice way. So uh, you can see I'm all suited up and ready to go. Let's get cracking. Okay, so uh, here's the flea market finds from uh, from this weekend, and. Uh, Hey, look, another hacksaw. <laughs> um, actually, this one uh, may be taking a, a world tour. Uh, I think I'm going to send this one to Bruce Whitman. And now, Bruce is uh, he's pretty good at, uh, at dolling stuff up and painting things, so uh, this will be a great little project for him. And he'll get in a, uh, a yank uh, uh, hacksaw and a um, uh, high tension hacksaw down there in Oz. So, uh, so I got that, that was two bucks. Um, anyway, oh, you know what, I'm just gonna go through it real quick here. Um, got some Mill Smooth uh, Nicholson files here, okay? Uh, these are, uh, the current crop of Nicholson is made in Mexico. Um, and you know, I haven't noticed any particular difference in quality, but uh, these are marked uh, USA. Um, six inch mill smooth which is something I use uh, regularly and they do wear out um, and uh, you know if you're filing stainless and uh, other materials uh, so this was ten bucks for three of them which is you know not a super rocking price but uh, uh, pretty good so uh, you know those are probably eight or ten bucks a piece uh, new price uh, but not USA either so uh, so I got those um, this is a uh, three-phase uh, 20 amp plug here, uh, brand new, still got all the goodies, uh, it's not missing anything. Uh, those are about, I don't know, $15 or whatever, cause I know because I just bought one. Um, so uh, that, was, uh, that was two bucks, so that was great. Um, Stay Bright uh, solder, um, 16 gauge, so it's kind of smaller stuff, uh, which is nice. I have some bigger stuff. Uh, so depending on the size of the job, sometimes it's nice to have a, a, uh, um, a smaller diameter there. So that's a Stay Bright uh, solder there, made by the Harris Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, and then these two were bought together for $12. $12? Yeah, $12. $11, that's right, $11. It was a weird number, that's right. Because I gave him a 20 and a 1 and I got a 10 back, that's what I remember. So, uh, quarter inch drive uh, extension, uh, long one, I don't have a really long one like this, quarter inch drive, um, and it's a Craftsman, uh, but I think it's an older Craftsman, uh, although, frankly, I don't uh, know how to tell. It just has, because it's slender and uh, nicely finished, that's why I say it's older. The new stuff is kind of, kind of, uh, thick and bulky and, uh, and a little bit cheesy looking, so anyway. And then a 12-inch uh, rigid uh, pipe wrench. So, uh, you know, never met a rigid pipe wrench I didn't like, so yeah, that one's uh, that's pretty good. And what you look for on a, on a pipe wrench is you look at the teeth here, and you run your finger on the teeth, and if they're still crisp and sharp, and they're not all rounded and chowdered over, then uh, and then the handle's not bent, because uh, that's the other thing you see is the handle's bent for people putting cheaters on there. Um, then uh, you're good to go. Uh, now, in general, I prefer aluminum ones since I'm such a wimp these days. Uh, but hey, for uh, you know $6 or whatever that was, uh, uh, couldn't pass it up. So anyway, that's flea market stuff. And uh, all right, let's move on. 
All right, so this next one is kind of a, an odd combination. Um, first part of it is a, is a beautiful stainless steel hammer. Um, and uh, this comes to us from Dylan Rink um, in uh, Sterling, Alaska. And uh, Dylan has a little uh, machine and uh, welding shop up there in, uh, in Sterling. And uh, he does work for some local companies around there. So uh, Dylan, thank you very much. It's a beautiful hammer. Um, it's got removable faces, uh, aluminum. Oop. Oh, look at that, uh, fine threads. Uh, he single pointed fine threads on there. And then a plastic face, uh, looks like Delrin maybe. Um, anyway, removable faces. And he did, a, this is a kind of a nice job of fluting here. I like this. Um, these are, I uh, used a ball end mill uh, to create these flutes on here. So it's actually, a, I just like the, the linear look of that. It's kind of nice. So, uh, and then he welded the, uh, welded the handle to the, uh, the head there. So Dylan, thank you very much. That's a, great, uh, that's a great hammer. And then the other thing that came with it, so I guess his dad uh, uh, smoked salmon. So uh, he, uh, he conned this off of his dad, uh, some of his precious smoked salmon here. So uh, um, I'm going to take that to work, and that's going to be my lunch uh, uh, this next week here. So, Dylan, thank you very much. That's awesome. Oh, and I guess uh, the salmon came from the, the Kenai River. Uh, and this is silver salmon here, which is a uh, nice salmon. So, uh, um, anyway, uh, Dylan, thank you very much. Uh, nice set of gifts there. Thanks, buddy. Okay, so this next one comes to us from a fellow YouTube creator. Um, his name is uh, Josh Jordan and uh, his channel is uh, Turnmaster and if you look in the uh, description there's a link to his channel uh, and then one on screen here too. Um, so I guess uh, Josh bought this VFD um, looks like a, a, an eBay purchase or something like that and he bought it for his coolant pump um, for his lathe and um, so uh, now the, the reason he's getting rid of it is because this one is three phase input, three phase output and what he needed was a single phase input and single phase output so you can get them either way so uh, watch out for that if you're thinking about using a, uh, a, um, a VFD for a little project. Now this one is a half horsepower and uh, Josh thought I might be able to use it on the bandsaw. Uh, unfortunately it's a little bit small for that but uh, we'll find uh, we'll find something to use that on, and uh, or we'll pass it along to somebody that can use that. So uh, um, anyway, it's a little Dayton AC inverter, three phase in, uh, three phase out, and um, I'm sure that uh, you can probably download the uh, the instructions uh, for this one uh, uh, from the now D Dayton is uh, Granger's by the way for those of you that don't know. So. Uh, so anyway, uh, check out uh, uh, Josh's channel, Turnmaster, and uh, throw some comments on there on their forum. And hey, Josh, I took a look at your channel. Uh, you need to you need to get on the video horse again, there, buddy, and uh, and get cracking. So uh, anyway, thank you very much, and thank you, Ray Cornelia, for uh, packing this up and uh, sending it along. And uh, uh, actually, you know what? It came straight from Josh. Uh, I think uh, Ray just uh, was kind of the middleman here. So anyway, thank you, Ray. Thanks for your help there, buddy. And uh, um, Josh, thank you very much for the, uh, the VFD. Okay, so hey, I just wanted to comment on this, uh, this weird hammer that I showed last week. Um, a couple of viewers just kind of jumped right on it and then um, uh, helped identify this thing. And what this is, um, is it is a, uh, a roofing hammer, uh, but it's for uh, uh, doing slate roofing. Uh, so I guess this is a mainly kind of a European uh, tradition is slate roofs um, coverings, and uh, this is a hammer for preparing the uh, the edges of the slate. Um, and if you look in the, uh, the description uh, down below here uh, in the video description, uh, there's a link to a video uh, showing how the hammer is used. And it's pretty cool because uh, the, these beveled edges that we were looking at are used for trimming the, tie or the, uh, the slate. And then this pointed end here, they actually 
punch holes through the, uh, uh, through the slate to, to put nails through. Uh, and this is used in con conjunction with a little stake, uh, a little T-shaped stake that sits in a, uh, on a, uh, a sawhorse or up on the roof or something like that. Then they drive nails with, uh, with that in. Now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna zoom in on the uh, on the maker's marks here so you guys can see it because I discovered a I discovered another one that's actually really cool up here and uh, so I'm gonna zoom in real tight so you guys can get a look at those and uh, uh, enjoy those too so let me zoom in on it. All right, there's the first one. This is up near the the top of the uh, um, top of the hammer. And uh, I, I was pulling some of this crud off of here, and I just happened to notice that. Um, I, I can't read it here in the viewfinder, but it's got these two cross little hammers here, and uh, it might be some kind of guild emblem or something like that. I'm not sure sure what that is. And then the other one is the, uh, um, you know, there was some, um, I, guess, I guess this is a uh, kind of an old work, old word and it means uh, case hardened or something like that I don't quite remember what they were what these guys were saying um, but that's the other uh, the other mark that's on this thing too so uh, pretty cool though uh, it's a so it's a roofers hammer but for slate roofs pretty neat okay so we got a brilliant copper claw hammer that uh, mr. John Offner uh, sent us um, and he had this when he was in the Navy down at uh, Lemoore Naval Air, Naval Air Station. Um, and th just as a reminder, this is the, uh, the hammer that uh, got broken in 1963. Um, and uh, it's going to get a new handle here real shortly. And uh, so we got a U.S. made uh, Barilco hammer made out of beryllium copper. And uh, we've got a... Uh, link handle and um, these guys um, um, they have a an out they used to have a division in Tennessee I think and uh, and then this says uh, Indiana here um, I used to buy a lot of handles from these guys uh, when I, uh, I had a hammer that I used to make a long time ago so let's pull that off American Hickory all right so so this is a a rectangular eye here and we have a rectangular eye here and uh, we're gonna pull this wedge out and, uh, and then the metal wedge so we got a wood wedge and a metal wedge and um, what you'll notice is uh, that, you know you always want these to be a nice tight fit and that's pretty that's nearly perfect okay now we're not going to drive it in there. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take a little off of this to fit it, um, so that it fits in there nicely. Now, this you know I ordered this from McMaster Car, and you know so you don't get to uh, you don't get to pick them out uh, when you do that. And this one has a little the corners kind of knocked off of it a little bit. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little off of the width and. The, th the thickness is pretty good because you see I can start it in there, okay, but the uh, the width isn't. It's a little, it's just a shade wide, no big deal. Um, we're going to go over on the belt sander, we're going to take a little off and I'll show you how I like to do it. Um, you know, there's a couple ways you can do this, but uh, the, th the thing to remember is uh, to work slowly, okay. Uh, because if you overshoot, then it's a problem, and uh, you know you do kind of a bad job of it. So let's go over to the belt sander. Make sure we have this with us, so we can check fit it uh, as we go. And we're going to take a little off of the sides and uh, get that little puppy fit up. Okay, so I like to do this on the on the underside of the uh, the the roll here, and the reason is is it's got a radius here. Um, that kind of blends in and matches with that. Uh, what you don't want is to end up with a, a hard, sharp uh, corner there um, when you're doing this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to we're just going to come in here like this, and we're going to come up right into that that little swell, okay, and uh, take a little off of this width as we check fit this, okay. All 
right, so get some uh, hearing protection on, and uh, let's do a little bit. So we get it a little closer. We can get it. We can get it started. Or I had it. Oh, there it goes. It's still too tight. And I wish I can. You know what? I think we're gonna have to take some off of the thickness here. Yeah. So we're gonna do the thickness the same way over there on the uh, on the lower part of the uh, of the belt sander, and we're gonna thin this a little bit here, um, and then we're gonna do a test fit. We'll drive it on, and what will happen is it'll shave the spots that it's really tight, and then we'll take a little more off of that and get the, the perfect fit. All right, so I did a little more. I think we're ready. So I'm going in there a good inch, inch and a quarter maybe. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tap this in a little bit with a soft hammer. Okay, so we're getting close, and uh, what will happen here is it will start shaving a little bit of material here, and then that will expose the, uh, the spots that, uh, that need some work. Okay, so we're real close, and you see that? It's shaving a little bit of wood right there, okay. So, I'm going to do a little bit of work, right? I'm going to take this back off. Uh, I'll probably put it in the vise and then just tap the handle back out. Oh yeah, that's going to be good. I like these handles with a waist in them like that. So, uh, all right. Let me knock that back out and then we'll, uh, we'll do, I'll come back and I'll show you how it marked that. All right. So you can see here that it's kind of, scuffed it all the way around here so if we read that if we read those marks we need to take a little off of here teeny bit off of there a little bit off of there and nothing off of that one right so uh, we're gonna you know there was maybe uh, I don't know a quarter of an inch or something up here so what we want is we want to move that line down into this region here okay just taper that back nicely and um, um, yeah, we're getting close there. So uh, let's let's go over to belt sander one more time and uh, see if we can get this uh, this little monkey fit up. Okay, so we're really close now. So what we got here, if we look, it's tight all the way around because it's driven on and wedged into the uh, into the wood. Okay, and so there's no gap and it's not really plowing anything just a teeny bit but that's okay and then at this end we're proud of this surface here we really you need a little bit of wood sticking up because once you spread this and do all this you need to uh, bring this back to this surface and so that it all cleans up nicely so ideally I would want a little bit more than what we have here since we got some some uh, chingaderas uh, in the end of the wood there. That's probably when they were, you know, holding this in the uh, the duplicator when they make the handle. That's probably the little drive thing. So, you know, ideally I would go on a little bit farther. Let's see. But we're getting into the steep part of the taper here. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty close. Maybe I'll go one more time and get it on a little farther. That way when we belt sand that back we get a really nice clean end on it there so let's do that I'm gonna take it off one more time all 
Yeah. Not much. A little bit more. That's it boys, we've got enough here to do our little business and uh, okay, I think we're ready to stick some wedges in there. Alright, so we're ready to insert the wood wedge here and um, so the wood wedge looks like it, the width is okay. Sometimes you have to trim a little bit off, um, off of the width of them which is easy enough to do. You just use a utility knife and trim a little off. So now what we want to do is get this started in here. Now, because this thing's under compression here, oops, here goes my pencil, uh, the, the little starting gap is kind of closed up. So what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to go in there with a hacksaw and I'll just open that up just a little bit to uh, right along that same line. so that the wedge has a little place to get started. I don't want to go too deep here. Alright, that's probably good. So let's cross our fingers here and see if this wedge will drive here. Yep, it's going. So now it's spreading this top section here. And filling up the uh, filling up the, the whole thing. You'll get to a point where you won't be able to drive this anymore. It's getting it's it's getting pretty hard here. I can feel it. I think that's about it. Let it rest. <laughs> I'll try some more here. With my finger on the sides here, I can feel it if it's moving. I think that's about it. All right. So now we're kind of ready here. What we're going to do, where's my Mr. Hacksaw here? We're just going to cut this off. flush with the world. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So now, this guy. Yeah. These are always fun to get going here. Um, so I'm, I want to put this in this direction here. Since this wedge spread this way, we want this wedge to spread the other way. Some guys put them in at an angle. Um, and But I find that the grain, uh, you know, plays havoc with that. So, uh, all right, we're just going to get it, in. you know what, I need a, I got a hammer right here. All right. that's, that's pretty good. And not bad. All right, I need to get this out of here because uh, I need to stand it on the table now. So that it can take that uh, take that wax. So let me move things around. tight. Sweet. Hey, it's got a good, a good solid bounce to it. Okay. Not bad. So now we got to be real careful here. We're going to, uh, we're going to go over to the belt sander and we're going to clean that off. But I really don't want to hit this um, surface here. 
uh, if I can avoid it. So uh, we're going to do something to, uh, to help protect that. So what I've done is I've just put a layer of uh, gaffer's tape down. And what this does, it just gives me a, a, a visual cue when I'm uh, getting down close to that surface. Um, now, when I made, when I used to make this hammer uh, that I used to make, um, I had some masks. Uh, they were sheet metal masks that went over the uh, the top of the hammer like this to protect that uh, that upper surface from damage uh, when you were uh, doing this uh, this operation here. All right, I think that's kind of ready. Let's uh, get this extra piece here. Go ahead and stick them on there, just for. Just for ha ha's. Okay, so let's uh, let's go do a little more belt sanding here. All right, so that's what we're gonna do right there. Hopefully, you got a reasonable view of it there. Okay, so that's right off of the belt sander there. Pretty good. So the temptation is to, is, you know, if you have a, a hammer that you're, you're not super worried about, you can go down and go ahead and touch the metal and it's all nice and flush and everything. But if you have one that has a nice patina on it like this and you don't want to monkey with it, better to leave a little bit sticking up than to, to go any too far. So we'll probably finish this one a little bit with a little bit of filing here. You got two different materials in there that file at different rates so I tend to focus on the hard one and the soft one goes along with it. Boy, we just caught those uh, those little boogers that were in the end of the uh, the end of the thing. close to getting off the horse here. Uh, 
it's pretty <laughs> you know you keep you run your finger over and you go oh, yeah a little more a little more a little more you know <laughs> What do you think? A couple more strokes? I know some of you guys, stop, just stop. They're, you're screaming at the computer. Stop, Mr. Wizard, stop. And the others are going, how far will he go? Will he go all the way down? It's got a little edge on it there I don't like. All right. You know what? I'm calling it. All right. Not bad. Pretty good. Let's take a look. See what we got. There's the, uh, the critical side here. And there's a little... A little bit of pushed up wood, but that's okay. You, know, you can go in there with a little scalpel or a utility knife and trim that off if you don't like it. Like that little bit there. Oh, it just rubbed off, no problem. All right, boys. Uh, I'm going to clean this this glop off of the uh, from the sticker off of here, and then we're going to call this call this done. All right. So there we get the uh, the rehandled uh, Brilco uh, beryllium copper claw hammer. Uh, and this came from uh, John Offner uh, from Gaston, Georgia, and uh, he, uh, he, uh, the handle got broken in 1963. So this, this head has been rolling around in toolboxes, faithfully waiting, uh, uh, like, a good, like a good friend, waiting in a toolbox to get a new handle. Um, and it's been eagerly awaiting to do something like this. <laughs> So this is 50 years later. This thing is uh, getting to do what what it was designed for. Now, back in 1963, they probably didn't have these green vinyl sinkers. Uh, na Oops. Oh, these are, nails are popping through here. Oh yeah, she works good. Here, let's see how she does on that. No. <laughs> All right. John, thank you very much for an interesting project, and uh, uh, your hammer's back. <laughs> All right, I think, I think we're going to give this a place of honor here. <laughs> Actually, eh, you know what, I can't do that. We'll, we'll find a new place for this. 